Hey guys, did you know that I have a Patreon where you can support me and plus get awesome rewards? Or if you're thinking to yourself, but Julian, I want even more bang for my buck while still supporting you, you can pop over to my Redbubble and check out my awesome store with new designs appearing regularly. But for now, enjoy the video you're about to watch. Alright everyone, you know the drill. This is YouTube, so it's time for a disclaimer. We are about to go into a critical reading of The Cellar, so if this happens to be your favorite book and you cannot stand to see it ripped apart, now it's time to go. Thanks for playing. The rest of you, enjoy the show. Mommy is here. Mommy and I are here for the next chapter of The Cellar. Or she, well, I am. She's, she's already done with this. I don't even know if people are watching these. Like, I have no idea. Do you, are you enjoying these? Because I film them all, I film them all mostly beforehand so that I don't have to like rush if I'm like running behind. And so I have no idea if people are even going to like this one. Probably not. Who's ever heard of The Cellar? But you know, I am a finisher, so I'm going to finish this damn book whether you like it or not. So yes, we are with Lewis and we are in the present day in the beginning of this chapter. So it has now been seven months since Summer was kidnapped. So Lewis is just mostly just li listening to him think about uh, how much he misses Summer and uh, wants to find her. And then he talks to his brother about Colin, who he thinks is creepy. Even though we've established that Colin is not creepy to other people, like that's how he survives. He seems very normal to other people. But uh, of course, Lewis immediately like picks up on his murder vibes, I guess, and is like, oh, this guy is creepy. And if that is how we find Summer, I'm going to be pretty upset because that is like, like all of this evidence, this, this guy leaves so much evidence behind, but if we find Summer on, a, on her boyfriend's hunch that he's slightly creepy, I'm going to be pretty upset. You're not giving this book credit. Why? This Summer? It's a retelling of the story of Persephone, and it's genius! The creepy dude is, is Hades. Don't believe me? No, I do not. <laughs> Especially since, at least by the standards of the gods, Hades and Persephone is the most loving and functional marriage. Okay, yes, but most people don't know that part of the story. <laughs> They're just like she was taken away from her mother. That's that's all. Most what about people. her her boyfriend though? Does he represent the mother in this story? Um, yes. If this story is gonna end with like. Them working at a deal with the murder kidnapper guy, and he's like, she can stay with you half the year, and she has to come back with me the other half. <laughs> okay, retellings aren't always identical. There's oh. like a reimagining. I see. Like. Comment below and let us know if you think that this is a reimagining of the Hades and Persephone story. <laughs> this author, again, I, I just keep repeating myself, does not trust their readers to pick up on things. This entire first part of the chapter has been Lewis being exhausted because he can't sleep. He can't sleep, he can't sleep, he looks at the clock, it's 2.30, he looks at the clock again, it's 4.23, and then they finally wake him up at 6. And as he's getting up, he says, my eyes stung from having hardly any sleep. We don't, you don't need to tell us that his eyes are stinging from not having hardly any sleep. You've just showed us that. You don't need to then tell us. Trust your readers to pick up what you're putting down, fam. Are you hep to the job? Can you dig what I'm laying down? I knew that you could slide me some skin. So, brother? Oh my gosh, it is. That this is what's happening. They are wanting to sneak into Colin's house because they are so suspicious of him. With all of this, with mountains of evidence, with a literal corpse pile in the canal, and him having murdered a woman in her home. The ones who are going to find her are two boys who had a hunch about him being kind of creepy. What the hell is this book? What the hell? Here's another thing. I may have already pointed this out. I, these are so far apart. Watch out for words like felt. I felt rage coursing through my veins when you can say rage course through my veins. Felt is like a middleman that you don't need. Here's another one. I clenched my jaw and felt every muscle in my body tense. You can say, I clenched my jaw as every muscle in my body tensed. Or you can flip it around. Every muscle in my body tensed and I clenched my jaw. 
Lewis decides that he's gonna go after the guy who was having the affair with, what was her name, Cindy? I don't know, Shelly? I can't remember from the office who, who was having the affair. Anyway, he decides that he's gonna go after him because he's like the person of interest. And so he goes to just like beat him up and try to kill him. And then as he's doing that, like he's punching this guy just in his front yard and a cop appears like literally out of the ether and grabs him and hauls him away. It's very random. It's like, he, it's like where the fuck this cop was summoned by magic? Later it's like, oh, he was just hiding in his like plain clothes car, like parked down the way, but it was really super fucking random. It was just like, and the cop teleported in like Star Trek and arrested him. So now he's gone uh, to the police station and they're not gonna press charges, but... I, I mean, I don't, honestly, I don't hate it. I mean, obviously this plot point makes the book longer, but at least it gives Lewis something to do and it gives us a little bit of personality from him that he is very overcome with this uh, trauma and like just filled with uncontrollable rage by it. So it gives him a little bit of something. Before he was absolutely a nothing character, he was just the perfect boyfriend character. I mean, he still is that because, of course, in all of our fantasies, the perfect boyfriend would go and punch the crap out of the guy that he thinks kidnapped us, of course. But, like, it gives him a little bit of a flaw, I guess. Maybe I'm reaching for anything. I'll take anything at this point. But, you know, uncontrollable rage, I guess, is a flaw? Doesn't necessarily make him someone I would want to date. I'm still waiting to see, though, if we end up getting, Colin ends up getting caught because Lewis has a hunch. We'll see. So that was very short-lived. He goes to the police station. They're like, Mr. Hart's not pressing charges, and you can go. And Lewis is like, me, 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 I hate the police. They're not doing anything. Bye. And he just, like, leaves. Oh my gosh. This author is so judgmental. I can't handle it. I can't handle it. So they bump into Colin, they decided to go downtown and pass out more pictures of Summer. And so they bump into Colin, who's coming out of a store with a bag full of yarn. And this makes them suspicious, because what is a man doing with yarn? This is more suspicious than if he'd been walking out with, like, women's clothing. Yarn? J'accuse! Did you just buy something at the yarn yurt? No. Well, yes, but it's for my grandma. For your information, these are not knitting needles. They're tools for making secret codes. Yeah, uh, Lewis is fucking hella suspicious of this guy and his fucking yarn. I'm really impressed that they are still getting people together to search for Summer. Now, I understand that new evidence has been found, and maybe that's why, but the way they're talking about it, it sounds like they've been getting search parties together for the last seven months to look for Summer. I don't know how big these search parties are, but it's it's impressive that Summer is just like such a special person that they will just continue to search for her forever. He even says there were a lot of people that cared about Summer that just wanted to see her come home safely. I don't know who, but we'll just assume that she's very popular in the town. She's just everyone's favorite. Again, Colin is acting weird around them and they're and making them suspicious and it confuses me because, again, his outside persona is one of normalcy. That's how he functions, that's how he hasn't been caught yet, is because he is like the least suspicious guy when he functions out in the world. Or at least that's what the book's been telling us so far. So, there's one of two options. One, the author is just being lazy and wants us to think that Lewis is just that on the ball. Or two, we are supposed to be understanding that um, Colin is starting to break down. He's starting to lose his flair. I'm not sure that that's happening, but if we were giving the author the benefit of the doubt, that might be what's happening. Lewis is now super duper suspicious of Colin, and he's decided that he's going to stalk Colin. Which, I mean, I guess now that we have established that he's an incredibly impulsive person, that that's realistic for for what we um, just recently found out about his character, but he's right this time. Like that, the red herring of him going after the wrong guy did not last very long, because he is he is correct. And once again, I'm going to be very disappointed if he catches the bad guy on a hunch. Get used to disappointment. Okay. 
All right, and now we are on to chapter 28. We are back with Clover in the present day. He is bringing back yarn for the girls so that Summer can be judgmental about people who knit. Did a knitter hurt this author? Like, why is she so fucking judgmental about knitting? I don't understand. Men don't knit. Young women don't knit. Knitting is exclusively the realm of old ladies. I don't know what you're talking about. The coast is clear. I still don't know what the big deal is. I just don't want any of the others seeing us knit, okay? We're just going straight to him going to help search for Summer. So Clover is tense because he realizes that Lewis might be onto him, and so maybe that's why he's giving himself away a little bit. Because Clover has never had to work. Like, everything has come super easy for him in his kidnap and murder career. Women are always super easy to kidnap and murder. No one ever sees him, and no one ever finds the bodies until, like, right now. So, I guess I can understand why he's freaking out, because every- the stars had aligned for him so perfectly until this moment, when he meets a teenage boy who has a hunch about him, that, like, I don't blame him for being nervous, because previous to now, everything was perfect. Commas are important. What he means to say is the plain cream room. As in the room is cream colored, but he only has a comma after plain. So it's the plain cream room. As in a room that has cream in it. Oopsie. He takes a moment to be judgmental. Of course he does, because his author is pretty judgmental, I'm pretty sure. He pauses to look at uh, Summer's pictures that are up on the wall, and he says, She was pretty in her picture, very fresh-faced and natural. It was nice to see a teenager without a thick layer of makeup on. Why do we need him to pause to do and do that and have that moment? Who knows? That's why I think it's the author and not the character, because that that's so pointless that to be in there. Clover is being very judgy of Lewis, and he says... Lewis is the sort of person who only realized his mistakes afterward. He didn't think or plan forward. Dude, you have a corpse pile in the canal. You, the only reason that you have not been caught is because you have been the luckiest man alive. You don't plan either. Clover is not afraid of the police. He is not afraid of being caught by them. He is terrified of a teenage boy. Wow, Clover. You were just getting more intimidating by the minute. Clover is the most non-threatening murder guy in the world. So what I don't know is why the police are suspicious of Greg, uh, the, the um, unfaithful husband from the office. Why they're suspicious of Greg as a possible kidnapper of Summer. That's what I don't understand. Like, obviously they would be suspicious that Greg murdered the office whore, I forget her name, Cindy or whatever her name was. That I understand, but why are the police jumping to the conclusion that this guy also kidnapped Summer? So now uh, Clover Colin is fucking paranoid that Lewis like followed him home and is in his house. And maybe he is, we don't know, Lewis could be a ninja. Or, you know, because he said he was going to stalk Colin, so... Uh, and it's, it's just hilarious to me how terrified this murderer is of being found out by this teenage boy. Like, he was a little nervous about the police, but he, like, easily turned on the charm and deflected away from himself. But he is, like, terrified of this teenage boy. So Clover is starting to slip. We are starting to see him make more mistakes because he's terrified of Lewis. He's gone to get another prostitute to make himself feel better because, you know, I know killing prostitutes always makes me feel better when I'm having a rough day. And he's so upset by this teenage boy who might be suspicious of him that he's like, I can't even wait till I get home. I have to kill this prostitute, like, out here. Which, maybe this is how he gets caught. I don't know. We'll find out. But it's, it's interesting that he's just, like, so distressed by this. Also, the prostitute's dialogue is the most stereotypical, I've never met a sex worker in my life, author writing a prostitute dialogue. It's kind of hilarious. And he's killed another prostitute just like randomly somewhere. Yeah, he, I mean, he is like the biggest serial killer of our time. He has killed so many women. And he's like not even on the news. Like nobody even knows that he's a serial killer who exists. No one is looking for him. The... 
implication that I don't like is that sex workers don't have anyone who cares about them. That's the implication that I don't think the author realizes necessarily that she's making. She seems to think that you can just kill prostitutes like they're, 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 they're like potato chips, you know, you could just go through them and no one will notice or care, which is untrue. They have families, they have loved ones. Sex work is just a job. It is not like their whole lifestyle and that separates them from society and no one will ever like seek them or notice they're gone or love them. So that I think is not a great message that this book might be getting across to some people. Anyway, I hope that you have been enjoying reading along with me. Next time you'll be on to chapter 29 and we are getting close to being finished with this book so we're getting there. We're getting there and then I can go back to the library. The library is like, where's my damn book? I'm gonna have it forever, but I don't want it. Hey everybody, we're back, and we are back. Adam is over here, you can't see him, but he's playing video games, so if you hear random nonsensical things, that's why. We're gonna read, we're getting, we're actually making good headway. I've been reading like two chapters at a time, so that's really helping us make good headway through this absolutely terrible book, and I think we may be getting closer to the end. We are in chapter 29, and we are with Lewis now, in the present day. We're having yet another conversation about how they're worried about Summer, but they know she won't give up, and it's just the same thing over and over again. Here's a, here's a thought that uh, Lewis has. He's a clever boy. I had no idea what she was going through. It could be bad could be bad. Dude, you're pretty sure that she was kidnapped and possibly murdered, but this is the point where you're like, it could be bad, the things that are happening to her. We're stalking Colin's house because he has that hunch, as we established. Again, probably the thing that's going to get Colin caught is not the police, but in fact a teenage boy. His boner senses were tingling, dear. Mm. The power of a teenage boner. So now I could be wrong, but this is the first time that we are told, this far into the book, explicitly told that um, Clover's house is invisible from all other houses, all other neighbors' houses. Uh, maybe I was told that earlier on and I just forgot because it does take me a while to read this book, but I have no memory of ever reading that Clover, Clover's house couldn't be seen from any other houses. I thought, I knew he wasn't like in, in a city, but I thought that he had neighbors. Still, even though, you know, there there would have been, with all of the women that he abducts and murders, there would have been a very good chance that some, at some point someone would have seen something. I've gotta love this vagueness. He's peeking in a window and he says, The room was a large living room, decorated in a traditional way, but seemed in keeping with the time. Could you be more vague with your description? It was traditional, but also kept up with the times. You use your imagination to figure out what that looks like. So Lewis didn't see much except for he saw several shoe boxes of women's shoes, which he's suspicious about. Which brings up a good point in my head, why would Clover buy them shoes? They never go outside, they never leave the cellar, why would they have need of shoes? In fact, a kidnapper can control, sorry about the washing machine, a kidnapper can control his kidnappee's ability to flee by making sure that they don't have shoes. So it's it's odd that, that Clover, that like, this is the thing that Lewis sees because Clover gave them this sort of, why would he get them this, you know? Does that make any sense? Does that make any sense? I understand what you're saying, but maybe he has a foot fetish or an aversion to uncovered feet. I and... mean, I could maybe see that he doesn't like their feet to be bare because bare feet are gross and dirty. The no, only thing we know uh, of... Only whores and prostitutes go around with their feet uncovered. Yeah, there we go. Sure, I don't think that is actually a thing, but maybe Clover thinks so. <laughs> he thinks that stilettos are like the same as being barefoot. <laughs> We'd also like to point out that Clover makes no attempt to have curtains drawn or anything, and I can only assume that he never does. He just leaves his, his windows visible to the world as he drags prostitutes into his house. So even though all, we, all he saw were boxes of women's shoes, which again, questionable, Lewis is now certain that Clover is up to shit and he drives away and he says, I now knew that he was hiding something. Yeah, perhaps he likes to wear women's shoes, you <laughs> judgmental ass. <laughs> 
Although that'd be a fun twist, is that, like, you're generically describing a character the boyfriend is suspicious of, and you think it is the main perpetrator, and really it's just a cross-dresser. So now we've gone back to Summer's mother's house, where Summer's mother is just, just adoring the hell out of Lewis. She's just like, oh yeah, I didn't used to believe in teenage love until you and my daughter got together. And I saw the way she looked at you, and I believed in love then. Because you two, what you two have is real, and I just, wow. There's this weird little subplot happening involving Disneyland, just in this chapter, where at the beginning of the chapter when he was talking to the mom, she was saying how she was going, when, when they found Summer, whenever they find her, they're going to take her to Disneyland. And then we have a little interlude where Lewis went and uh, scoped out Clover's house, and now he's back talking to the mom, and they've gone right back to the Disneyland thing, where now Lewis says it was always his dream to marry uh, Summer at Disneyland. And I just, I'm, con I'm so confused by this Disneyland subplot. I don't understand why it's in here or what it's doing or what is happening. And of course the mom is not freaked out by the concept of this teenage boy wanting to marry her daughter because this mother is convinced that they have this absolute, true, perfect love. And so of course it would be fine. And that's the end of that chapter, ending with a flashback about them going to a pizza place. Summer likes weird pizza. Summer and Lewis are hot for each other. The end. Good chapter. Well done. 10 out of 10 chapter. We're on to chapter 30. How are there 30 chapters in this book? How are there so many chapters in this fucking book? Why? Why? I know why. It's because there were a lot of chapters because it was a Wattpad story and no one thought to edit this down. We're, we're with Lewis again, oh joy, in the present. So in this chapter so far, Lewis and Summer's brother have gone back to Colin's house to continue to creep. Um, I feel like this maybe could have been consolidated into one. So they found a window open, obs, and uh, shoved the brother through it. It's a good thing these characters are right about this, and uh, he is in fact the kidnapper. Their hunch is correct, because otherwise they'd just be breaking and entering. A plot twist, um, they found a picture of Colin and his mother kissing. Now, they didn't say what type of kiss. I'm assuming it's more than a cheek kiss, but some parents kiss their children on the lips. That was never something that my parents did. It's a little weird to me, but some parents do it. So, if she was a real old-fashioned lady, it, it might have just been a quick parent-child lip kiss thing. But I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's because he's like super fucked up because his mom used to have sex with him. So he finds a whole closet full of women's clothing, which makes me question, unless, unless Clover is wearing them, why is there a whole closet full of women's clothing? Because when he buys new clothing for the girls, he brings it down to them, and when he, when they are done with the clothing, he puts it in garbage bags and takes it to a thrift shop to get rid of. So why does he have a closet full of women's clothing that, that, Lewis notices are neither in style for an old lady to wear, nor are they like in style for young girls to wear. So other than to be there as obvious evidence, why does he have these? And now he finds a secret stash of tampons and maxi pads just in the closet as well. And again, why would he not just take all of the supplies down to the girls? Why would he keep a secret stash? Was he just like to play with them? I don't know. Convenient evidence is convenient. So now they found a newspaper, um, or a bunch of newspapers that are the ones that have Summer's pictures in them. And they're like, okay, well now that we have a box of tampons and this, these newspapers, he is definitely the kidnapper. They are like 100% certain now. Lewis has decided that the thing to do now that he is 100% certain is to call the police, but he has broken into this man's house and the police are probably going to, I mean, if these were real life police, they'd probably arrest him for breaking into a man's house. I don't know enough about probable cause if finding tampons and women's clothing in this guy's house would be enough for them to break in? I feel like no. 
I feel like the police would not invade this guy's house for a box of tampons and some women's clothing. What do you think, Adam? Um, unless, no, because, like, that's just, you had a woman, women, woman visitor. Unless it was, like, the same brand as the one that you know your significant other carried around in their purse all the time. And in fact, you recognized the particular individual unique tampon. Like, she rolls her own tampons. <laughs> <coughs> no, it could be anyone's tampon. That's not enough for probable cause. Yeah. So we'll see if this, if the police bust in or if they just uh, arrest Lewis for having busted in. Or maybe what they're going to do is Lewis is going to refuse to come out, so the police will have to go in to remove him. And then while they're in there, Lewis will be like, while you're here, since you're already in the house, why don't you look around and see if you can find any evidence? Yeah, if you, like, a perpetrator, or a, uh, a person breaking into a house would be probable cause for the police to go in. To break in. But would the police in real life actually be like, you know, you're right, we should look around this house for evidence while we're in here. Or would they be like, um, no, you are a kid who broke into a house after, previous to this, punching a man who you thought previously had kidnapped your girlfriend. So, if I was the police, I would just cart his ass off and be like, second strike, kiddo, we're done. But we'll see if they believe oh, him. Oh no! Oh no! Uh, it, it's a white boy, right? He is a he is a white. He gets boy. more than two strikes. He's a handsome white boy. Yeah, oh, handsome! Oh yeah, he gets lots more than two strikes. He's <laughs> a handsome white boy. He, the police show up without any sirens or anything, and Lewis is like surprised that they came um, so quickly. And my thinking is that they were all at the canal, dragging it for more corpses. The cop is just like tired. The cop's just like, Lewis. You can't go around breaking into people's houses, like, you dumbass. <laughs> oh no, this book, this book does not have the receipts to do this kind of thing. So Lewis, the, the cop doesn't believe Lewis, because the cop is rightfully saying, a box of tampons and some newspapers does not evidence a kidnapping make. Mm -hmm. And Lewis is like, well, why can't you come in here and search? And the cop's like, I can't come in here and search, I don't have a warrant. And Lewis says, well, maybe the way you do things needs to change. And this is not the kind of book that has the kind of story where, like, I mean, Lewis is right and we know he's right, but it's a hunch. And he's not like some hard-boiled cop who's, like, got this evidence or something. And he's like, the, the way the police do things needs to change. He's just some dumbass kid who lucked into this situation. So he doesn't... He doesn't get to say things need to change, and this book doesn't get to end where he's right and the cops need to, like, change the way they think and listen to the hunches of teenage boys. It's so stupid. But his penis senses are tingling. <laughs> and in the end, the cop doesn't even arrest him. Lewis asks, you're arresting me? And the cop says, no, but don't let it happen again. I mean it. Next time, I won't just pick you up, understood? Oh my gosh, Adam was right. He's a white boy, he gets away with everything. He punched another man and he broke into this guy's house and the cops just like, don't do that anymore. That's the end of that chapter. Um, that was, that was bonkers. Um, but we all know that Lewis is correct, which makes me want to kick something because of course the hunch of the love struck teenager is better than the work of the police because that's just the kind of book we're dealing with here and I hate it so much. But that's it for today, so I will be free of this nonsense for now. Freedom! You don't have to read this, what's your problem? Hey everyone, I'm back for more of The Cellar. Adam is back. Hello. Avi is back. We're all back. Kinshu was back. We're all back to read uh, chapter 31, and probably I'm just gonna... Whoa, she just made an amazing, uh, mighty leap. I told you, She's I getting better you. at leaps. I thought I was far enough away. She's getting better at leaps. Anyway, <laughs> we're probably just gonna go through. There's like four chapters left. We're just gonna blaze through to the end of this book, where... Uh, her boyfriend will undoubtedly, her, Lewis will heroically save her, and I believe uh, Clover will be taken away to the loony bin or something. But 
the funny farm with life is happy all the time. Uh-huh. Uh, but nothing terribly exciting is going to happen. That's my prediction. Like, it's going to be a very flaccid ending, I predict. So let's just find out, shall we? We're with Summer again in the present. This would be a lot more effective if Clover was afraid of something besides a teenage boy. Because Clover's getting worse, he's getting vi more violent, he's getting edgy. But it's not because the police are onto him. It's because a teenage boy is onto him. Why not just kill the teenage boy? That's a great question. He, I guess it's because he doesn't kill teenage boys. He only kills women. I can see he's got a huge bonus to killing women, but then that's the only reason. Get I mean, away he with put it. all of his points into kill women mm -hmm. because, like, look at what he gets away with. Like Everything. A... Every time he murders a woman, it's super easy for him. He never finds one who's able to like successfully mm -hmm. defend herself. He's a poorly specked out ranger with favored enemy just triple stacked into females. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So apparently, also Violet is better. Um, her seeming to be very close to death in the previous chapters is over. She has recovered from that, so thank goodness, I think. So Clover has come down to see the girls, and he is in proper freak-out mode now. He, he's like, someone's trying to separate us, so I need to make sure we can never be separated again. And our main character immediately jumps to, yeah, he's gonna kill us. So now she's freaking out, um, and you know, probably appropriately. We'll see if she actually does anything with that freak out. Will our main character finally do something? He's still only got a knife. A fucking knife. There are four of them. And he has a knife. You can win the situation. And, and uh, Summer is like, oh, I can't see these other girls killed because we become like family. And I'm like, no, you have not. All you've done is think judgmentally about them and plot getting back to your boyfriend. You are not. There is no relationship that she has really formed with these girls. Clover also went pretty quickly from, you know, I can't let anybody find out about my girls, to I guess we have to uh, suicide. There was really no arc for that either. He just kind of went there. Rose is just gonna let him stab her. Like, that we're meant to believe that Rose is so indoctrinated by this stupid man, that she is just going to stand there and be like, well, okay, if you say so, stab away. But who was? It's so stupid. Also, also, uh, Clover has, our, our main character has noticed that Clover is so stressed out that he didn't shut the door all the way. So they don't even have to fight him. They don't even have to kill him. They just have to run away better than him. So, like, they have so many options, and they're still standing here being like, Oh, what do we do? I don't know. Guess we'll have to be stabbed. So once again, we you heard it here, folks. I looked around the cellar for anything at all we could use to hurt him or distract him. Nothing. That is a damn lie. Did our main character, like, need glasses and we were never told this entire time? So she's just like, oh, there's nothing in this cellar. I don't see the chairs. I don't see the pots and pans. I don't see the fact that, like, if you just want to distract him, this guy is a clean freak. Piss on the floor! You have options. Oh, Violet's been stabbed right next to our main character. He grabbed Violet, who was holding hands with Summer. And Summer just like, oh, no. My friend. Oh, I guess I, there was nothing I could do, because we all know that Summer is secretly into it. Now Poppy's been stabbed, it's still our main character is doing jack shit. Finally our main character has decided that it might be appropriate to do something. She has grabbed Rose, who is the only one yet unstabbed, and has started running behind the table and heading for the stairs. This entire paragraph is just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Uh, Clover's all like, hey, it's okay, I'm just gonna stab you, we'll be together. And our main character says, we are not your fucking family. I snapped and gasped. What had I done? Keeping him on my side was harder than I thought. He's not on your side, bitch! He's about to stab you! It is okay to go against him at this point. What is wrong with you? <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah... <laughs> I can't handle You're this character. You're frustrated with him too, Avi. End up. Avi, 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 come here. 
I just, I need my emotional support ferret. I can't handle this character. <laughs> Avi, Avi, the tiny ferret, would be better in this situation than Summer. <laughs> Avi, if you agree, escape. She agrees. Now, of course, our main character has chosen the wrong person to let live because, you know, she watched the other two girls get stabbed, and so she got Rose. Rose, the most indoctrinated one. And she just, like, she tells Rose to run, and I've got money that says Rose does not run because she is the most indoctrinated one. If you wanted to get somebody out, Summer, you probably should have reacted a bit faster when the other two were being stabbed. Just saying. So our main character uh, has distracted him in hopes that Rose will run, and she is like, I'm just gonna knee him in the balls. You know, that's the thing to do. Uh, but then he comes at her, and instead she punches him in the face. Then she goes to kick him in the world's slowest, most wound up crotch kick ever, but Rose intercepts. Surprise, surprise. Alright, and so we've already reached sort of the exciting climax, and I guess these next few chapters are just going to be... Uh, well, I suppose they'll probably be from Lewis's point of view, telling us how he got down here, but, um... Rose intervenes, and Clover punches our main character in the head, and she is about to pass out, and then all of a sudden she hears a couple of bangs, which I assume are gunshots, killing Clover and Rose, no doubt, and then she's being carried, she's aware that she's being carried, undoubtedly by Lewis, who followed them down here, and because Clover left the door open, Lewis just came down, and possibly with the cops. We'll see if he had the cops or if he came alone. But yes, pretty much exactly as I predicted, uh, Summer did not get to save herself. In fact, she was completely ineffectual, which is totally in character for her. <laughs> and uh, I am so glad that we are almost done with this book because I hate everyone in it. So we are with Lewis, as I predicted. Let's go chapter 32. Okay, we have gone back in time so that we can find out what Lewis did to find her. Oh, but apparently the police somehow got a warrant to go into Clover's house. I think it's Clover's house. How and why? Who knows? But they're like, yeah, we finally got a warrant. I mean, last I heard from the police, they thought that Lewis was overreacting, but sure. Now they're like, yes, that box of tampons is irrefutable proof. We have probable cause. Let's go. Okay, so it was the police who busted in, and they already have her. So, you know, you, Lewis didn't actually get to save her, which is a surprise. It was still his hunch, the hunch of a teenage boy, and rather than, you know, good police work and the, again, literal mountain of evidence that Culver left behind. So I don't understand why the police decided to go in. But they went in, and apparently they went in armed, and they uh, shot Culver. So, and Summer is okay. Summer the Psychopath, she's fine. I want a sequel to this book, somebody write that on Wattpad or something. I want the sequel to this book that's about Summer realizing that she likes watching violence and she goes on her, she becomes a murderer herself and goes on her own prostitute <coughs> killing spree. Hmm. Would she do prostitutes or would she kill men? Hmm, she might kill men, but no, she only really got, like, she only watched him killing women. Yeah, so that but, was kind of like what she was so leaned on, sort of. True, to pass though, she might like want to get vengeance against men and the man, the man who did this. She, but she doesn't. That's the thing about Summer. Like she, she thinks that he was crazy, but she never wanted, she, she never wanted revenge. She never wanted vengeance. She never had violent thoughts against him. That's why she mm -hmm. was like, oh, there's nothing in this uh, cellar that I could use to hit him with. But she just doesn't even think of it that way. Gotcha. So it, I think in her mind, violence is only done against women, and that's it. Ah, so, so okay. So yeah, she has to find she's sort of to yeah, her. almost like self-victimizing, like victimization by proxy. She's killing these other <laughs> women <laughs> because she's into being victimized. That's my new uh, head canon, and someone please write that. Guys, we have finally reached it. The cliche line that we were all waiting for. I blew out a deep breath I didn't even know I was holding. There's so much filler in this chapter, it's just like, this whole section is just filler that doesn't need to be here. Okay, plot twist that came out of fucking nowhere. Uh, the cop is like, hang on Lewis, you can't go see her yet, you will find her much altered. And apparently, 
somewhere, even though we never ever got that from, from Summer, she has become indoctrinated, and now she only refers to herself as Lily, even though, like, m like ch two chapters ago, she was still like, no, I hate him, and I'll never forget who I am, and I hope Lewis comes to find me, and now it's like, she doesn't even know who we are, and she keeps asking for the other girls, and, and she only knows herself as Lily, and... <laughs> what? Is it so that he can go in and she can see him and snap out of it when she finally sees him? Is that what this is? All right, we're back in Summer's point of view for chapter 33. Yeah, even, like, she's, we're in her head and she's waking up, and even now, and Abby's playing with the dog's water dish, she likes to scratch it. Uh, even now, we're not getting anything from her that she thinks that she's Lily. She... She says, strange but familiar voices of my family. I was out of Clover's prison and in the hospital. Like, she would, if, she thinks of it as a, as a prison. If she was all indoctrinated, why would she? So we had a little reunion with Lewis. Summer's feeling a little bit on edge about it. So at least we didn't have, like, the magical, uh, perfect boyfriend comes in and saves her with a kiss. Um... And then Poppy is here, and they're both crying because Violet is dead. Surprise, surprise. <coughs> but Poppy wasn't stabbed too bad, so I guess she's just fine to be up and walking around. Alright, so that's the end of that chapter. She just has a little bit more alone time with Lewis, and basically we just float around in her head thinking about, like, everything's different now. Can it be as happy as it was before? Blah, blah, blah. I don't care. But now we are with Summer again for chapter 34, which might be the last chapter. Where we finally just like wrap it up. Oh, yep. They're all they're putting roses on the graves of their friends uh, who died, which includes Rose. So Rose was shot, as I guessed that she was. So they found out. Uh, we all know that Rose's real name was Shannon, but apparently no one found that out. She's such a nobody that nobody found out her real name because they're calling the other girl who died, Leal, which is her real name. But they're still calling Rose Rose. So, I guess she just doesn't even get a name. Oh, okay, so she's been, it's been seven months since they were kidnapped, and she has been, no, it hasn't been months, it's been days. Oh, wow. Okay, I guess they're just bonding really fast. So she's been hanging out with these girls and their families, because their families are back in the picture, I guess, even though they were all, like, abandoned girls. Um, and also, Becca, who I think was... Uh, Violet? I can't remember. Is, uh, already getting cozy with Summer's brother, so, you know, we definitely needed that, them to pair off. We do have to have a little bit more drama here at the very end, because why not? Summer's all still tense with Lewis, and she's all like, I don't deserve him, why would he want to be with me? And I just want to smack her, because I'm so done with this character and this book. Also, this author is not skilled enough to handle... And I'm very kind of upset that she's trying to handle a girl who was assaulted then going back to try to have a normal sexual relationship with her boyfriend. This author cannot handle this. And this book does not deserve that kind of emotional beat. And I'm upset about it. So another effect of a Summer having been in the cellar is now she used to be terrified of horror movies and now she can watch slasher, slasher movies without so much as a flinch. Again, furthering my theory that she's into violence now. We don't need all this wrap up, like we don't care. Who cares about her friend Rachel from the very very beginning of the book who now feels guilty because Summer got abducted while they were supposed to be hanging out at the club. No one cares. No one even remembers Rachel. Rachel is not a character. We don't need, like, there's all of this, this author is trying to have all of this, like, these repercussions for this shitty story that she's just told, and I just hate all of it. So Clover got away with just going to a psychiatric ward. Um, he wasn't punished for any of the many, many, many murders he committed because he was um, deemed not mentally stable. I don't know. Because we haven't really had anything like this, I don't know how that would go in real life. I don't feel like it would go like that in real life. If somebody had killed so many women, so, so many women, and imprisoned others, I just don't think we would even let him get away with the whole, well, I was crazy the whole time defense. 
Because you have to prove that you were, like, not mentally understanding what you were doing. And I, he was. At, so, I mean, he must have had the best lawyer in the world. Guess he worked for a law firm, so, huh, I don't know. You said that you thought it was unrealistic that he didn't go to jail. And I disagreed with that. Alright, which do you guys think it should be? Do you think he's crazy enough to just go spend the rest of his time in a psych ward? Or do you think, like I do, that he should definitely go to prison forever? And now we have a whole scene of just Summer, the very end of this book, Summer making up with her friend Rachel that we do not need. I definitely think the author did not know how to end this book, did not know how to wrap up this book, so they're just like trying desperately to tie up every possible thread. Okay, and then we just kind of, the book just kind of comes to an awkward end with the hint, the teaser, that Clover could be released because we hear that like his doctors are really happy with his progress. So, and I think I heard that there's a second book where Clover is released and we get from his point of view, I'm not going to read that in a never in a million years. Um, but we have reached the end of this book, I do believe. Yes. And there is a little um, teaser here for another book by this author, also which I'm not going to read, but it's called Awake, and I've heard that it is even worse than Cellar, so wow. And the acknowledgments, the author thanks her editor, I'm really surprised that there was an editor involved anywhere in this book. I mean there weren't that many typos, but wow. And the, the very last page of the book is an advertisement for Wattpad. Beautiful. Terrible. I don't really think I need to give you, like, my final thoughts review on this book. I think that you understand. My loathing. You were here through it all. As usual, comment below and let me know if you were here for it all. If you were, high five the screen right now. Do it. <laughs> Don't uh, do it. You might break your screen. I mean, do it. It's too late. It's, they've already done it. I suppose. They've it already done it now. But yes, I don't need to tell you how loathsome this book was. I regret everything. But I do plan to do more read-alongs. I plan to... Uh, probably I'll be doing a poll for... I have three books that I might be choosing from. Can't rem remember if I already mentioned them in this uh, read-along or not. But this was hot garbage garbage. Like, if I could give lower than one star, I would. How is this published? Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and reading along with me for this hot mess. Thank you, Adam, for being a dissenting voice and always contradicting everything I say. I didn't always contradict ever everything. <laughs> there were some things I agreed, and sometimes I just shut my mouth and stayed quiet. <laughs> oh, was there more you wanted to comment on, but you uh, didn't? And thank you to Kinshu for being my lap warmer, and Avi for being the crazy one. Julian from the future here, because you know it's not a proper read-along unless I visit you from the future. I mean, what even took me so long? We talked throughout this read-along about ways that this book could have been made better. We discussed uh, how Summer could have made friends or relationships with the other girls. We discussed how Summer could have an actual character arc, either going from defiant to meek or meek to defiant. Either one! An arc would have been great. We talked about Summer turning into a murderer herself, but I want to know what your thoughts are. Now that you've heard the whole thing, please comment below, leave me an essay down in the comments about how you would fix this book. Go crazy. You can either make it realistic or you can make it as wacky as you want, but I want to know how would you fix the seller. I read all the comments and I do try to reply to them even though I'm kind of late, so I am super excited to hear your thoughts. You guys know that I usually post videos Mondays and Fridays, all the links to my social media are in the doobly-doo for ease of your clicking, and if you want to keep interacting with me and see special videos and content, become my patron over on Patreon. Otherwise, I also have, if you somehow missed it, a read-along of Jenna Moresti's The Savior's Champion, where I give it the same treatment as I gave this book, so go check that out if you're interested, and I'll see you guys again next time with whatever it is I happen to be doing next time. Bye! Say goodbye. Bye. It's barely here. <laughs> Hi, Abby. Hey everybody, it is shout out time again. Time to shout out to my patrons, Amanda, 
Ashley, Celia, Kim, Lisa, Ramona, Sabby Panda, and Sarah. And if you want to be great like these amazing people, then become my patron over on Patreon.